Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I'm your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I am just going to be honest. Your Amazon listings, they suck. That's what we're going to talk about today. Your listings suck, but there's help. There's hope, there's things to correct, there's things to remember. So of course, I am not gonna push you out of the plane without a parachute, right? Um, I'm gonna help you, Um, but I am gonna push you out because you realize your Amazon listings suck. I mean, can I I just, can can you just admit that? Just right now, all of us, we have a listing or two at least. It's just not great. It needs some help, it needs some attention. Maybe it sells a little bit, but you know you can improve it. So why aren't you? If someone said, hey, if you adjust three of your images and your price, you could literally triple your sales. Would you do that? We would. So let's do it. So I want to just get with the big elephant in the room because this is the number one thing that scares people off from wholesale, from wholesale bundling, from creating their own brands on Amazon is that they say, I don't know how to create a listing. I come from retail arbitrage. I'm scared. I'm nervous. I'm going to screw it up. I just don't create listings. I don't know how. Well, number one, education. I teach you how in the wholesale bundle system, mommyincome.com forward slash system. It is college level material. I teach you step by step how to create a listing. So that can't be an excuse you have. If you don't know, learn. And there's training and there's good training. I can teach you how to write a listing. So that can't be an excuse. I'm afraid if I create a listing, I'll do it wrong. Guess what? You might. (laughs) But guess what? It's not written in stone. If you are following my wholesale bundle system and you have created your Amazon brand, remember Amazon brand, this doesn't mean it has to be some household name that's on the the, the shelves at Target. Creating an Amazon brand, uh, guess what? I teach you how to do that inside of wholesale bundle system. Just go get it if you don't have it. I teach you this. So we're left without excuse. You have, there is training available to learn these things. And then once you do, you're unlocking the key to unlimited income potential, because as long as you, you have the ability to access products, which I teach you how to get access to products, and you have the money to purchase those products, you can sell whatever you'd like in combinations that are amazing for your customers. If you do it incorrectly, you can correct it. You are creating the listing under your brand. Therefore, you can correct it anytime you want. You're the owner of that asset. So when the listing goes wrong or something happens with it or you don't like the wording, you get to just update it. It really is that simple when you have brand registry. Why? Because you have claimed ownership of a brand. You're creating listings on behalf of that brand and they have to honor that. So it's a protection that you have. And guess what? You don't have the same listing nightmares that other people have because UPCs don't match or brands don't match or you're using someone else's brand somewhere. You're using your own which means you own the assets. That's a good thing. I know there's fear because people want to do it right. They want to do it perfectly. But how many, let me just ask you this. In your life, how many of you mastered something that you did for the first time? Just be real. Just think for a second. Excuse me. Just a moment of silence here. I'm going to give you a moment of silence so that you can actually think of a time where you've tried something for the very first time and you were just like amazing at it. You're just like, oh my gosh, I could literally be a pro. It it literally took me three seconds to realize that's never happened. (laughs) Um, I don't know, maybe with eating pizza, but then again, I probably ate pizza for the first time when I was like very young. And so did I master it then? Probably not. But honestly, let's be real. Anything that you're going to do for the first time, you're not going to be a master at it. So why are you expecting yourself to write a perfect listing if you've never done it before? Hmm? Okay. So let's get back to reality because that's fantasy land, right? If you're expecting to do something perfectly the first time you do it, your expectations are too high. Okay? Expect that you're going to give it your best shot the first time, right? And that you might make mistakes and that's going to be okay. And guess what? You can go back and change them. If you you own the listing, you can go back and update it whenever you choose. Now, I have guidelines and when and how you update things because I think it's really important to keep track and document these things because you want to know what's working and what's not working. We don't change and update our listing every single day. We don't do that a lot. We do it when it's necessary. But guess what? When you're doing it for the first time, let yourself off the damn perfectionist hook. You don't have to be perfect. You're doing something for the first time. It's enough that you're trying it. It's enough that you've had the courage to try something new. So stop holding your own standard of perfection when you're doing something that's new for you. Okay? Are we clear? 
Do you understand? Okay, I'm just talking to you because I'm talking to me. I don't know why we all think that we're going to do something amazing the first time we do it. Look, no, just have the expectation. I'm going to really screw this up. And guess what? I'm going to live. I'll be fine. I'll learn from it and I'll try it again. And I'll get a little bit better at it at that point. This is called practice, y'all. Do you actually have the expectation that you're going to come in here and waltz into the Amazon world and write a listing for the first time and just hit a home run? Uh, you ever seen Karate Kid? When Mr. Miyagi is sitting there and he's attempting to catch a fly with a pair of chopsticks and he's sitting very still and he's very serious and he's got these chopsticks and and he he's trying to grab the fly and he, he's missing it and missing it and all the while Daniel comes in and he's watching Miyagi do this and he's watching it and he gets the chopsticks and he just like out of the clear blue sky while he's just having this conversation and being so relaxed and you know everything else you know he snaps it up and he grabs it the first time and Miyagi is like super mad and he's like you beginner luck like you know he basically says you have beginner's luck and you just got that for the first time once and it was a lucky grab but this takes more skill and practice that's more real i mean yeah you could have a random home run if you actually you know, did that for the first time but we're talking about long-term consistent effort you can do something really well the first time because you're just trying it and you kind of got the concept but being consistent is a whole nother thing it's like making one free throw, but then trying to make them all consistently all the time on a regular basis. So that's kind of the comparison here. Give yourself some time to learn and practice and refine this skill. It does not happen overnight. You will not be good at it when you first start. You might be better at it than some, but you're still gonna have a lot to learn and that's fine. We're always in process, all of us. So give yourself some grace and just realize that it, you have permission to be a beginner. And that means that you're a beginner and no one else is going to beat you up for that. And neither are you. Okay. Okay, good. And that's why we trust the facts, not the feelings here, because we feel inadequate. We feel like we don't know what we're doing. We feel afraid that we're going to try it and mess it up. Well, first of all, even if you do mess something up, number one, Amazon will give you errors and that they won't push your listing through if you have these errors. Number two, um, they, they have policies in place that will suspend a listing if you don't if you're you know doing something wrong that could break all the rules. Other than that, it could just be low visibility. So it's not like Amazon's going to kick you off, but then the customers won't find your product, which is a form of punishment in and of itself, right? So I want you to be able to do it correctly and good right the first time, but give yourself grace and realize it takes practice. That's why I tell people practice from the dollar store, practice from something that you don't really care about that you're not investing a ton of money in so that you can be like, okay, I got this process. And then the next time you can do it better and it can be like the legit one, you know? But I've had clients come and they have started a, what they call a mock wholesale bundle and they actually put it out there into the universe and it sold really, really well. And they actually did well the first time. And some people are like, oh, well, I tried that. I'm glad that the first bundle I created wasn't my permanent bundle because it was kind of a flop or whatever. And um, they tried the second one. And then that's when it was good. And then the third and the fourth. You know, so so you've got to try and you've got to practice. Um, and remembering, if you create it, you can change it. On that note, if you have a listing that's terrible, and I'm going to about to give you the one, two, three, four, or five, whatever updates and things that you can do to improve your listing. So hang in there because uh, it's coming. This is a short episode, but it's very, very powerful. Take some notes, write this stuff down and do what I'm telling you. Why? Because it works for me and it's successful and you might as well learn from someone who is doing it and is finding success with all of these different things. Don't change too much about your listing all at once. The reason is, is if your listing's not performing well right now, you want to change one KPI, one key performance indicator, one thing. Change the title, but not the keywords change the bullet points, but not the description. You want to make sure that you're, you're documenting your change. What was it? So this is what I'm saying. This is the first thing. Open a Google doc, a Google folder, whatever it is, and put the ASIN, the listing, and then say changes, original, put your title, updated title and the date, and then update your title with whatever you updated it. Therefore you have the old, you have the new, and then you have the when. This is really, really important because then you know, when did I change that title? And did it work? Is that the lever that you needed to pull on to get more sales? Was it the title? And if you test that for a week or two and realize it did not change sales, you did not get more sales or less sales or the same sales, then you need to change something else. That's not working for your visibility. Is it your images? So then you've changed the title, that's fine. Next, 
you want to change the images. So then you say original pictures, original images, new images. You can put this all in a Google folder and the date at which you made changes. And then two weeks later, go back and analyze the data. That means I'm, you're guessing that you're, you're keeping track. How many units are you selling in a two week period? Track it, track it, write it down even on a piece of paper, on a sticky note and crayon and marker and pencil on Google Drive um, with voice text. I don't care how you document it. I use Google Drive and folders and titles and that's as sophisticated as I really get sometimes. But if you are all fancy like, then great. Do whatever works for you, but document it. So go in and be like, these are the four images I had on this date. On this date, I updated, updated them with lifestyle images and you know graphics and here it is. And I updated it on this date and record. How many average sales were you getting prior to this item and how many average sales are you getting now? Did it change? Did it stay the same? If you don't have sales to track, then track page views. Page views. You can check this in your reports in the back end of your ASIN, in your Amazon reports. How many people are looking page views or visits or sessions? Uh, look at those numbers. Document something. And then only focus on that metric. OK, so if you're looking at your page views and they rise from 1200 page views to 2000 page views after you updated your images, you know that that was a deciding factor in them clicking through. This is testing your stuff. Is your stuff important enough to spend 15 minutes making these changes and documenting? It doesn't take longer than that. It doesn't. To update a title on your listing, it takes less than 15 minutes. You go to your document, you pull the old title, you write the new title, you document the date, you document how many sales you had in that in a 14 day period, you come back, you put it on your calendar in 14 days, come back and check it. Yes, that was literally just like a worksheet of checklists of what I just created for you. You're welcome. It helps. So if it's not the title, then next week it's the images and the week after that or the day and not the day after. Give it a week or more. I know that it takes patience to sell stuff. If it was doing great before and it's not now, there's things that you can do to kickstart your listing back into place. Doing what you've always done gets you what you've always gotten. You want a different result, make a different choice. That's what we're doing. We're gonna choose to do our listings differently. Okay, now that's just practicality there. Change one KPI at a time every two weeks, document the metric, document what you want to change, and then realize sometimes you might only have to pull two levers. Sometimes it might be the whole dang listing. And if before you get to the keywords, you realize that that's something that's hindering or helping you. Still, it's worth the patience. You don't have to wait two weeks every single time, but you have to wait a consistent period of time. It's not going to be overnight. It's not going to be in 48 hours where Amazon's like, oh, these people changed this listing. Now I'm going to start dumping all kinds of traffic there. No, it takes time for the algorithm to pick up on it. So give it, okay, I will say a week is minimum, five days minimum, but I would say a week. I know it's hard to wait. You're like, I'm not making any sales. How do I wait a week before I change something? I hear you. Take a deep breath. Change what you need to change and do something else in the meantime. Your business needs far more work than just one changing one listing and sitting on your hands so put it on your calendar so you won't forget a reminder check all updated listings if you do them all on the same day then on the same day is the follow-up two weeks later you follow up put it on a schedule put it on a, a routine you know why because eventually you can hire someone else to do that and then it's just happening and you give them the protocol. First, we change this. If that doesn't work, then we change this. Then after this many days, we change this. After this many days, we change this. After this many days, we reconsider whether or not this is a good selling product and we either junk it or revise it or you know make an executive decision about keeping it or, or losing it. It's not personal, it's just business. How do we recoup the cost on this bad project and get it back into a good project? In the meantime, while that's on automation, either by you or someone else, not really automated, but it's on a schedule. You know, it's when it's happening. You don't have to freak out about it. You don't have to worry and wonder. You're working on your next bundle. You're bringing something else to the table. Next, before you really even craft your listing or before you go and revise it, Remember the title is this, the problem you're solving or need you're meeting with your product. It's not necessarily, this is not your product description. Think of your title as the words your customers are using to window shop. 
like when we window shop at and downtown wherever we go we shop with our eyes we walk physically down the street and we look at the window and we read the sign and we go oh this is you know main street rocks and crystals i want to go in there you know they have shiny sparkly things and you know whatever you read the sign we look at the pictures right so your amazon customers are coming in and they're first shopping with words they're shopping with words first they're not shopping with just their eyes and, and now that's the second part right they're shopping with words first and then their eyes they're looking at your images so first you need to attract your clients your customers your people with words what are your customers going to sit and type in when they think of your product they want that product what is the need they're meeting or problem they're solving i'll give you an example i'll give you an example of something i've been seeing on merchant words i don't love this example but it's real cheap gifts for my boss under 50 dollars. that's literally chief gifts cheap <laughs> cheap gifts for boss under 50 dollars on amazon what does that tell you first of all it tells you exactly what the customer wants. They're telling you with their keyword phrases exactly what they want. They want a cheap gift for their boss under $50. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't love calling my product cheap, but I like to put that in somewhere in my listing. So I'm not going to write cheap products for boss. I'm going to put gifts for boss under $50 in my listing somewhere. So then I'm solving a problem. It's a gift for a boss. The second problem is it's under $50. $49.99 still counts, right? <laughs> um, so you can build those keyword phrases in and that's what your customers are searching for. They're not searching for necessarily all the individual items inside of that. They're solving a problem. They're typing that in. Another thing I just recently researched, I'm just sharing ideas for, for like off the top of my head here. Uh, my daughter wants a new dance bag. Her dance duffel bag is proving hard to keep nice, cute dresses and the costumes clean and fresh. So I'm, I'm being suckered into buying one of these dance bags. Now, y'all, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, but it's like this giant rolling suitcase about 30 inches long and it has a pop-up clothing rack inside of it. No joke. It's like this rolling duffel. It, 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 I think it's the size it, it does qualify as like a carry on and you hang up everything in there in garment bags and it folds like flat. I don't know the people on the podcast can't see my hand motions here, but I'm literally like kind of designing this and it's like a clothing rack. You just pop up out of the bag and boom, all of your stuff is hanging up in the proper bags and ready to just roll down the hallway for your next, you know, when they dancing they have to quickly change because they're constantly changing their clothes to go to another dance and to do this and it, it's mass chaos somehow but anyway this dance bag is very important apparently to all these quick changes and things like that and as we're doing more dance i'm learning more about this well here's the thing you have to know what the buyers are going to call this and y'all i had no idea what this dance bag was that she was telling mom i want one of those rolling um like wardrobe bags and i was like what and so i had to of course where's the first place i go as a consumer i went to the amazon app and i was like okay and i put wardrobe dance bag right and i had to scroll through three pages of stuff before i could find something that was similar to what she was describing and turns out the word wardrobe wasn't in there, although that's what she called it. The seller wasn't calling it that, so I had a hard time finding it. That's my point. What is your customer going to call that? Now, someone, whoever's selling said dance bag, first of all, oh, thanks a lot for it being $200. Um, I get it. It costs money. It's like a suitcase, like luggage. It's a suitcase with like a rolling rack. Okay. I know I want it to be cheap, right? <laughs> but make a bundle because then I had to buy the garment bags all separately and that was annoying. And then the right proper hangers that fit on there so that it still zips up. Like sell all that together. Bundle. Do it. I'm your first customer. Um, and it's expensive and sell it in multiple colors because the pink and the, the blue doesn't match their dance colors. I need red. <laughs> Anyway, no, to self, product development, whatever. The reality is you have to type in what your customers are typing in to find yourself. They're not just sexy seller words. Use the words your buyers or your buyers are going to call that a rolling, um, you know, dance wardrobe pop up clothing rack in a bag. 
that's basically all the description use all the words your customer. i don't care about sexy words and vocabulary use the words your customer using if they're using the word stuff use the word stuff i'm not kidding i know it seems really like bad language or not proper you know grammar or things like that well you know you want to use stuff that the algorithm is going to pick up but the word stuff is constantly on merchant words you'll see it it's like uh you know stuff for my camper van stuff for um my school bag stuff for lockers middle school like people use the word stuff if you're not using the word stuff look it up with your keywords and see how many people type it in T title your items like your customers. Know who will be purchasing your item and why. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Y'all, this is good stuff. Who, what, when, where, and why, and how of your product or bundle. That need, That's what someone's typing in. Space saver. Organizer. Use the words your customers are using. And if you don't know them, use relatedwords.org. Use Google, use Pinterest, search everywhere else. You don't just have to be on Amazon. Use the word, what do they call this in Europe? What do they call it in Mexico? What do they call what you're, you're describing in other languages and other cultures? The difference between a house coat and a robe could just be simple East Coast, West Coast. You don't know. Do the research. Why? Because you get more customers. That's why. Look, AI is great. Use AI to write your listings, but you write them based on what the AI can be a good platform to help you. What is a robe called? And I'll, I mean, you can ask Google almost anything now. Now you can use AI to do it. So whatever AI thing you prefer, Jasper, Chat, GPT, whatever, all the things. But you write the listing based on the information you give them and then, then that they give you back right? It's still a human element. You're talking to people who are typing into a computer or using Google or Amazon uh, in their like a voice texting. So that's a real thing. So write your listing so that they can be picked up by, by people and algorithms. There's a person who has a need or a problem they want to solve with your product. You need to put that in your title and listing and know what keywords and phrases buyers are using. Look at other platforms. Look at other generational language. Yes, these things matter. Other, ethnic, other ethnicities and cultures call things different things. They have different products. They use different things for um, religion and faith and everything else. Look up these words. Use them. There's multiple, you, you know, we're, we're multicultural. So what you call something might be something different than someone else. And that's great. That means more customers for everyone. So seek that out and create a listing from the buyer perspective. I cannot say this enough when it comes to listings. People want to write listings with algorithms. They want to use the best keyword tools and all this, this, and that. And yes, those things are helpful. But again, here's my soapbox about tools. It's not done for you. No one's going to do it for you. The hammer is a tool, but the hammer doesn't build the house by itself. The saw needs to be operated by a human. And also purchasing happens by a human. So as much as we can automate, great. I'm all about automation. Great. I'm all about the tools. I want the tools. I want things to be easier, faster, more efficient, but I also want them to be, have a human element because a human is still going in and typing something on a phone and needs a dance bag and needs to know how to explain that and to find products that they're looking for. Create a listing from the buyer perspective. The tools are just tools until you use them. Ask yourself, what, what would I need to know about this product in order to make a purchase? Are you asking yourself these questions when you're writing listings? Your listing's your ad. It's your only real estate on Amazon. Yes, you want to take it seriously. But this is how. You don't get so scared that you don't do it. You sit here. And you ask yourself these questions. How would I describe this? Ask yourself what you would need to know about this in order to put place your order. To add buy it now. To add buy it now. What, what, what would it be? What, how, what would you have to say about it? What would you need to be convinced? What would you need to know? Well, what size is it? What shape is it? What kind of need does it meet? You know, all these different things. How would you describe it? How would you search for it? And then 
go to other platforms and search for those very things and you look at the keywords that they're using and then look at the multicultural world words and different ways to describe those things and include those in your listing how would you search for it how would you describe it what would you need to know to make a purchase and remember a listing can be changed it can be updated do not let fear stop you from creating a listing it's not written in stone images can be updated everything can be updated you don't get suspended for bad listings. You just won't get sales, which is signs that you need to make a change. Research is key in determining what to sell before you even craft a listing. Research. I love merchant words. Mommyincome.com forward slash merchant words. Um, I love them. This is not a commercial for them. It's just my undying love for them. Why? Because they're always improving. They're always looking to change and to make things better and to give us the most accurate data that we can possibly have to make the best product decisions so that we can profit. That is their mission. That is why I partner with them. It doesn't mean there's other tools that aren't great. There's other great tools. Helium 10 is a great tool and you know, Jungle Scout and AMZ Scout, a lot of these things are very great tools. But I do have my favorites. Merchant Words is really straight, direct to the point. I can go classic search, I can find it. It's really easy to read, it's really easy to relate to, it's really easy to link back to Amazon and see that. Um, all the different tools and stuff are easy to use. I am not super tech savvy and I don't wanna learn a system to learn a system to learn a system. I just wanna, to, I want Merchant Words to help me make decisions on products on Amazon. And it's the fastest, easiest way for me. Now you guys might like other tools and stuff like that. We have, um, you know, we have partnerships with a lot of these companies, Mer uh, Merchant Words, Helium 10, all, all the rest. Um, but I'm just here to say that you don't need all the bells and whistles, but you do need research, proper research tools. My favorite is Merchant Words. Um, and so, yeah, we, we send them business because we love them and because it's my favorite tool. It's even in the wholesale bundle system. You don't have to use it. You can use any keyword research tool you choose. But I like fast, simple, efficient. So that's why I love Merchant Words. But keyword research is essential before you even craft a listing. Be, this is the rundown of the tools. So I hope you have, I hope you've already been taking notes. But if you haven't, go back and listen and listen to it slower because I know I talk really fast and take notes because this is like, this is training. You came to school today. I hope you were excited. Sometimes you get my, my very motivational, inspirational rah-rah and sometimes you get, get your pen and paper. We're taking notes, okay? So that's today. Research is key. Title, be specific, be precise. Most people shop on mobile, so you're getting that first chunk of words about 80 characters before it's dot, dot, dot. What can you say about your product in 80 characters that's going to convince me to buy it or to click through? The click through is the most important thing. They see the picture, they get 80 characters, they're like, oh, yeah, I want to see more. That's all it is. Or it's either see more or scroll. So you want to make sure that the, that first 80 characters specifically is very captivating. Solve their problem, meet their need minimal information that is the most relevant i'm going to say that again that's for the whole listing minimal information that's the most relevant bullet points key product features who what when where why and how of your product what is it what it's made of the features the benefits how it works practical direct we don't want paragraphs here now if your item really needs to be described in that way number one i would suggest get brand registry and make a video if you have to explain it in that many words but number two, people want to know what size it is, what shape, what's it made of, what kind of packaging does it come in? Like people want to know all the specs, the products, the features, the benefits, the measurements, the attributes. Description. Now the description is seen first on mobile. So on mobile, it's the description first and on desktop, you get the bullet points and then the description. Okay, so that matters. Um, but it's seen first on mobile. So make sure that the first few sentences are direct and to the point about what you're receiving, especially bundlers. You will receive how many of this, how many of this, how many of this. Then you can go on and describe those things. But first, they want a list of everything that's in this package. This, this package includes one, two, three, four, whatever that is. Then you can describe all of those things. Okay, apply the principles of listing here, except for do not repeat the phrases a couple of times throughout the listing. Once in the title, once in the description of the bullets, the key repeated phrase, pick one. If you could only rank for four keywords, 
repeat those four keywords a couple of different times. Now, there are mixed messages out there about don't waste keywords, don't repeat them. I call BS. Uh, there was a time I was not repeating keywords and then Amazon had no idea what I was selling and they assumed upon it being something else. Example would be coffee beans versus coffee mug. If you keep saying coffee over and over and over again and they don't know exactly what you're selling, they'll apply it to whatever they think. And then when you're not making sales, they're going to push you to down to the page 512 and no one's going to see it. So repeat your one key phrase over and over to make sure that Amazon really understands that this is what you're selling. Speak to the buyer, not the bots, not the user. Remember, if you're selling toys, children aren't going on to Amazon and buying their own toys. Their mothers are buying them. So always speak to the buyer. The mom buys the kid stuff. Usually wives buy a lot of husband stuff, you know, or, you know, someone's buying for somebody else. So make sure that you're getting the need, want, or desire from that and describing the person that's going to be typing in the search. That's your target customer at this point. It might not be the end user. When I say that, here's an example. If you're selling a Mother's Day spa gift set, the purchaser might be the daughter or the son buying something for the mom. But the end user is the mom. So they're going to type in, you know, Mother's Day gifts for, you know, Mother's Day gifts, you know, spa or um, bath bombs, you know, or something like that. And then they're going to find your gift set. Okay. So that you have to sell to the actual purchaser. And sometimes that's not always the end user. So it gets tricky in adding those in, but you have to think about it. Yes, you have to do some work. But it's going to be worth it because if you really capture your customer and what their wants and needs are that's how you sell product it's not just by an algorithm it's not just by some bots doing a bunch of research there's human elements you must think you must craft you must do the work and then refine it and then keyword tools merchant words create a listing create your list of check marks of making sure i do this sometimes i still do this manually i know some of you guys are like you're crazy we literally have AI writing stuff and you're over here writing stuff on pieces of paper. Well, I think tactilely, so I need to use colors and I remember things when I attach color to them. And I hate, I hate inefficiency. I want to use my, my time the most efficiently. Why? Because time is a precious resource that you can't get back. And so nothing irks me more than wasted time. And if I can do things faster with AI, I realize it gets in my way. I remember more. And when I remember more, then I don't have to do the work twice. So I do practices that help me remember the most of what I do so that I don't have to do it twice. So if I'm doing research for a bundle, I know that more than, more than likely I'm going to use that research two or three more times in two or three different bundles before I decide that that's enough. So why do, why do all this keyword research and then continually reinvent the wheel? Like if I can use this research and create three products, that's way more productive and efficient than constantly starting from scratch. So if you have a successful bundle, you say, oh, what else would someone want in a bundle similar to this or using the same keywords? Y'all, this is the sauce that you need, right? I mean, you wanna work faster, more efficiently and more effective for the most profit, don't you? So that your life can be your own? I do. So that's why I try to do everything that helps me succeed, including if I have to writing down on pieces of paper and colorful markers so that my brain remembers things that I don't have to do twice. That works for me. For you, it might be typing. Maybe it's hearing, listening, writing, all the things. There's studies on how people learn and how you can retain the most information. That could conversations for another time. But I have learned that based on my my own way of thinking, learning, and and remembering, I, I have to do things a certain way. And that works for me. Whatever works for you and you know yourself, if you're way more analytical, um, you know, I'm, I'm more expressive and emotional. So it's a little bit different how I have to tap into my brain. But the way that you do that is up to you. But use the most relevant search terms, the most niche, less is more. But your Amazon listings don't have to suck. And this is why, because I literally just gave you like a whole guide. So even rewind it, go back, write some of the stuff down. This is training y'all. And then thank me later. You know, you can subscribe, you can, you know, whatever it is. But uh, this is definitely a way you can improve your listings and uh, just follow kind of follow these steps, improve your sales, and always remember you're speaking to humans. Be bring that human element to this. Y'all, I know you could be anywhere else. 
doing any other thing, listening to any other person. I don't take that for granted. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Make sure you subscribe, you tell a friend, you leave a review. That's your way of saying thank you and and please continue producing more content. Um, Thank you for uh, listening and we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Piles.